Hi, Bill from CJ Pony Parts. Enthusiasts were thrilled when Ford revived the Boss 302 nameplate in 2012. Like many special editions that are made up of stripes and scoops, the Boss had forged internals, revised camshafts, ported heads, and this all-new intake manifold, making 32 horsepower more than a stock GT. Along with better wheels and tires and an improved suspension, the Boss was a true performance package. One of the most popular parts to swap onto a GT has been the Boss 302 manifold. These have shown considerable power gains on power adder cars, and even the naturally aspirated guys can benefit from the increased RPMs. Today we're going to install this intake on a 2013 Gotta Have It streetcar. The Boss 302 intake is a composite intake with shorter runners designed for high RPM use. It's also going to look great under our hood. When installing the intake, you'll also need the installation kit, which gives you the proper fuel and vapor lines, along with this bracket and hardware necessary for installation. In the case of our 2013 streetcar, it has a factory strut tower brace which will not clear the intake. We're going to go with this brace here, which is specifically designed for the Boss 302. For this installation, you need a 3 8 ratchet, 13 mm deep socket, quarter inch ratchet, 8 mm deep socket, 10 mm deep socket, a couple extensions, Phillips head screwdriver, T30 Torx bit, flathead screwdriver, small flathead screwdriver, needle nose pliers, standard pliers, wire strippers, wire cutters, torque wrench, soldering iron and solder, wire, shrink wrap, a lighter, and safety glasses. Our 2013 Gotta Have It street car is mainly used for autocross, so we've done a lot of modifications to the suspension and the brakes. Under the hood, one of the real performance gains so far we've done is the JLT intake. Many of the tracks that we run at, the cars run in second gear and comes pretty close to redline. We feel the increased RPM of the Boss Retail intake will be a perfect fit for our street car. We're going to have to remove our stock intake, fuel rails, as well as our JLT cold air. The first step in the process is to pull up the factory strut tower brace. Now remove the intake cover, simply lift up and it'll pop right off. Now we're going to remove the lines from the valve cover to the throttle body. In our case, we have JLT oil separators installed. Pull back in the little gray clips and pull off. Disconnect the last line to the cold air kit. Disconnect the mass air sensor. Pull the little red tab underneath. Now remove the hose clamp that holds the cold air intake to the throttle body. And remove the cold air intake. Next, remove the electrical connectors for the throttle body. We remove the two clamps for the vacuum line to our booster. This part can be tricky because you actually need two sets of pliers to get this off. One clamp works in opposite directions. We're going to pull the coolant hoses out of the way. We're going to start on the fuel rails. Move the top two retaining nuts. 
remove the plastic retainer, and remove the foam. Now to the other side. Once you remove the foam on the driver's side, you can remove the brake line that goes to the booster. Now we'll remove the retaining bolts for the fuel rails. Now just connect all the plugs to the injectors. Now we'll disconnect the fuel line from the fuel rail. You want to make sure you have a ride to catch any fuel. If you're messing with fuel, it's a good idea to have some safety glasses as well. Simply press these blue connectors and push them through. And now we can carefully lift off our fuel rails. The injectors will stay attached to the rail, just kind of shimmy it back and forth and lift straight up. Now we're ready to remove the manifold itself. It's held on by three bolts, one in the front, one right here in the middle, and then one in the back on each side. The bolts stay attached to the intake manifold so they won't come all the way out. We can start removing our intake. Several harnesses on the back, you just need to pop them off. I'm just going to give the surface a quick clean. I'm going to go prep our Boss 302 intake for installation. Now we're going to transfer the throttle body and the fuel rails over to our new intake. Now we're finished with the stock intake. We're going to leave the purge valve here. The install kit for the Boss 302 intake comes with its own purge valve, which is installed a little bit differently. Now we'll install our throttle body under our Boss intake. The intake has a gasket built in, so it's ready to install. There's two alignment tabs on the intake that match up with these two holes on our throttle body. Now we're ready to reinstall the stock fuel rails. Actually, you're gonna go under the intake opposed to on top like the stock one. Get the injectors in place and push them down. Now we're gonna install the purge valve on the Boss 302 intake. The install kit includes the hardware, bracket, and the Boss 302 specific purge valve. Pop it on the side up here. And this will go right here on this bracket that gets screwed into place. Now we're ready to install the Boss 302 intake onto our car. Now we'll tighten all the bolts down and then we'll torque them down in the proper sequence when we're done.
Now we're going to torque the intake bolts to 89 inch pounds. There is a specific sequence you're going to use. You start with one on the passenger side in the middle, two driver side middle, three, four, five, and six. Now we'll reinstall the fuel rail bolts. Again, just hand tight for now. These will be torqued down as well. The fuel rail bolts will also be torqued down to 89 inch pounds. And again, there is a specific sequence. It's going to be one, two, three, four. These lines are part of the Boss intake kit. The actual fuel line here is the same, it just has these grommets on it. You don't have to change the fuel line if you don't want to, and it can kind of be difficult to get down to this fitting. In our case, we're going to leave our fuel line and just add this correct line here. We can connect our stock injectors before we reconnect the fuel line. Make sure you hear a click every time you install one. Now we can reconnect our fuel line. We connect the injectors over on the other side. And we're going to get the line from the brake booster up into place. Now we're going to reconnect our vacuum line to our intake. Make it a little bit easier to get to. We're going to remove the vapor line. What you want to do is kind of spin this fit right down here on the bottom hose. I'll need some pliers to reattach those clamps. Reconnect the vapor line. This is the next line we have to remove. It goes down below the brake booster right next to the metal fuel line. There'll be a little green clip on it. Release the clip and pull out the line. We'll remove the line. Now we're going to remove the stock fuel line clamp. Pull the line out and twist that off. Now we'll install the new line to our purge valve. The red clip's going to go on top behind the intake, the green clip underneath the brake booster where we just removed the other line. This is the factory wiring harness for the purge valve. On the original intake, the purge valve is located up front, so it reaches fine. In the case of the boss, we've now moved the purge valve to the back. We have to cut this harness off and extend it over to the other side. Now we're ready to extend our harness by soldering our lead on some new primary wire. Ford recommends about 40 inches. I would stick with the recommendation you'd rather have too much than too little.
Now we'll shrink wrap it up before we install the other side. Now we're going to strip the wires on the car for our new harness. Now we'll fish the harness over to the other side. Now we can plug in our purge valve. We can move on to our covers. Now we can reinstall the foam over our fuel rails. And the covers can go on next. And then the coolant hose goes back on top. Reinstall our JLT cold air kit. Reconnect our throttle body harness. Now our passenger side JLT oil separator. Got a vacuum line for our master cylinder. And our driver's side JLT oil separator. The last step is the new strut tower brace to clear our intake. When installing it, make sure the arrows are facing forward. And our installation is finished. Now we'll start it up and check everything out. In my opinion, the Boss 302 intake is worth the install for looks alone, but you also see some nice high RPM performance gains out of it. Because of the increased flow, you will want to get a custom tune before running the car. The installation will take you between three and four hours, you'll be back on the road in no time.